Good shot. Oh my! Here to celebrate Georgetown, the Georgetown Raiders are Buckland Cup champions. The Trenton Golden Hawks, the R. Dudley Hewitt Cup champions, are going to Coburg. Back to Minerva. Shot scores, and the Coburg Cougars are the World Bank Cup champions. A South Division showdown, the Rangers. The Patriots, second place, chasing first. There were fireworks, all right. More on that coming up in just a moment. This is the OJ Today. Welcome, everyone. I'm Alex Bastiavansky. Today, the Buffalo Junior Sabres are the league's only American squad, and uh, we'll have a feature story on the Yanks, who are looking like a team that nobody will want to face in the first round of the playoffs. Also, Alan Corkum, uh, will join me as we break down the playoff chase going on in the West Division. But first, OJ game highlights. And the Toronto Patriots have established themselves as the team to beat in the Southwest, if not the entire league. They've taken over first in the OJ standings. Uh, but all that means is that they've got a giant bullseye on their back as we head down the stretch. North York was trying to gain ground last Saturday at Westwood Arena. OJ Highlights now brought to you by Cool Sports, official apparel provider to the OJHL. And this game was everything it was hyped up to be. Patch draw first blood, trade deadline acquisition, Kyler Matthews hammers it, and yeah, in it goes. Pats, one nothing ahead, second frame, they stretch it to two, Josh Redinger. Uh, side of the net here, falling down, doesn't matter, gets it to Andrew Petrucci, Pats looking good. Uh, up to zip at that point, but, hold on just a second. Krieger spins around, looks for it, he picks it up now. Krieger, nice toe drag move, looks to shoot. One, two, three moves, pass off, what a goal by the Rangers! What a move from Krieger! Yeah, all Krieger on that one, gorgeous. Just a minute 20 later, Sam Hunter with the snipe, and it's all tied up at two apiece. Third frame was crazy. Kyle Clark uh, gets sprung on the break here. He will split the wickets on Tyler Fassel. Rangers, uh, their first lead of the game, up 3-2. Back come the Pats, though. Uh, Jackson Alexiev on the doorstep. He will tie it up, but then, with just a minute 42 remaining in the game. And coming out of the box is the penalized player, and here's a break for North York. Here's Campoli. Nick Campoli drops it off. Lashuk shot, scores! Second of the game! The dagger. Nick Leschuk with the game winner for North York. Andrew Osmond with the great call. Huge win for the Rangers. 4-3 uh, final. Okay, the Cougars looking to steal two points in Newmarket on Thursday. Uh, second frame, Alex Irulo dribbles it off the post. Then... The Hurricanes are 0-3 for 3 with the extra attacker. They get this one to the boards in front of the net. There we go! Oh, what a stop! Come on! Call the cops. Yeah, Anthony Regan with the call. Elliot Girth with the larceny. Uh, all the scoring came in the third. Sam DeLucia with the wraparound that Christian Hufsky just can't catch up to there. Uh, and in it goes. Cougars break the ice. It's one nothing. Then uh, Jamie Engelbert. Different kind of larceny as he picks the pocket of wide Hicken and ices it. 2 nothing Coburg, that's how it finished up as the Cougars have now pulled slightly ahead of Trenton for third place in the East. Okay, a hungry Orangeville team visiting a struggling Stouffville squad. No scoring in the first. Hudson Lambert gets the party started in the second. 6.30 in, Flyers up 1-0. And then the brutal giveaway by Jack Varga. Oh boy, Varga coming out front here and then... <coughs> <laughs> Coughs it up to Evan Stahl. Flyers up by a deuce. 2 0. Uh, Spirit would respond on the power play three minutes later. Uh, it's uh, Jacob Breckles with the one timer. Boom, that tickles the twine. Uh, that makes it 2 1, but that's actually how it would finish up as the Flyers continue to hold that eighth and final playoff spot in the Southwest. Okay, one more before the break. Raiders visiting Mississauga. The Chargers trying to catch Orangeville. Uh, not a good start for them, though. Jonathan Hampton slams it home early to make it one zip G-Town. Second frame, uh, the Chargers would equalize. Brandon Yeaman, shorthanded. Nice solo effort there. 
to beat Nathan Torchia, and it's tied up at one apiece. Uh, all Raiders from that point on, though. G-Town on the PP, Derek McVeigh sticks with it out front, and the visitors retake the lead 2-1. Uh, third period, all Georgetown. McVeigh, not afraid to get his nose dirty, this guy, and it pays off. His second of the game, uh, and it's 3-1 for the Raiders. Six minutes later, Matty McJanet from the seat of his pants. Uh, nice feed from Andrew Court there, and that's Big Matt's 13th of the year, and it's 4-1 Georgetown. Uh, and then they add one more for good measure here as Zach Elson just wanders in. Uh, Roof Daddy and uh, the Raiders win their 11th and 12 games as they continue their pursuit of the Pats for the number one seed in the Southwest. All right, Scotiabank Fan Favorite Award back again this year. Here are the top uh, vote getters so far. Matt Jakubowski of Buffalo, uh, Max and Camp, Braden Aubin, Jack Ricketts, and Gage Stephanie of Trenton. A lot of Trenton guys on here, actually, as we see Mac Lewis, uh, Max Ewart, Tiger McDonald, and uh, two Wellington Dukes leading the way so far also. Jonah Capriotti, the standout goaltender, and Mitch Mendonca. Head to OJHL.ca to cast your vote. OJ commitments this week. Frazier Kirk, Captain Kirk, the awesome goaltender for the Newmarket Hurricanes. He's been a standout this year. He's going to be a Bentley Falcon uh, next season. Congratulations to Frazier on your commitment. And OJ Trivia. Of course, Trenton hosted it last year, but who is hosting the 2018 Dudley Hewitt Cup? I'll give you a hint, it's way up north. Our Morocco at the OJHL.ca to win an OJ prize pack. Hey folks, welcome back to the OJ today. Uh, happy to be joined now by the play-by-play -play man of the Georgetown Raiders and also the host of OJHL Rinkside on your TV, Alan Corkum, back on the show for his second time this year. Alan, thanks for taking time out of your busy day, my friend. No problem, Alex. Pleasure to be here again. We are going to take a look. Uh, last week we did the South Division uh, with Jamie Neugebauer. This week you're going to tackle the West, uh, a division you obviously know very well. Uh, covering the Halton region teams. Um, just, first of all, a general overview. I mean, realistically, Milton's the only team uh, that doesn't have a playoff shot right now. Uh, all the rest are either in or it's down to Burlington and Orangeville challenging for that last playoff spot, isn't it? Yeah, a lot of the teams are right in the thick of things other than Milton. They've been even competing hard the last couple of weeks, but just not getting the results that they have all season. But yeah, it's going to be a fun down the stretch to see what's going to happen, especially in that race for the last playoff spot between Orangeville, Burlington, and Mississauga. And we'll get to that more in depth in a moment. Let's start off with Georgetown at the top of the division. Uh, Buffalo had narr narrowed that gap for a bit there, but uh, Georgetown's uh, created some space once again. Uh, Georgetown, ups and downs this year. I mean, they weathered a storm earlier in December uh, when they went through, uh, well, unprecedented to me since I've been covering them for years, six-game losing streak. They've bounced back big time but from that now. Uh, they've won 11 of their last 12, and they're actually, they actually have a chance to possibly uh, catch the Patriots uh, for the first seed in the Southwest, don't they, down the stretch? They do, Alex, but I think it's going to be a very tall task with that very deep Toronto Patriots team. I think Georgia just had to worry about taking care of their own business. Yes, as you said, they've been hot, only two losses in the month of January, so they've been great. Uh, they're getting rid of that six-game losing streak there before Christmas, but they've been led not so much with the snipers. That's been one thing they've I found has been a bit of Achilles heel for them so far has been the scoring touch, but they are getting some scoring when they need it. Guys like Brendan D'Agostino and Jason Smith and Andrew Corder coming along and scoring nicely. They get some secondary scoring as well sometimes from Matt McJanet, Jordan Crocker, and then Justin Paul and Derek McVeigh are chipping in when they need to. Yeah. But the big thing I think, Alex, with this team is the goaltending. Yeah. And it's certain they went out and got Troy Tempano, uh, who went to the Memorial Cup last year. So a solid pickup and goal. Let's move on to Buffalo, who's in second place behind the Raiders. As mentioned, the Sabres have fallen off the pace a little bit. But in terms of facing the Raiders, Buffalo's had their number this year. They've won three out of four against the Raiders this season. And the, the vibe around the league you were telling me before is coaches don't really want to have to face the Sabres in the playoffs, do they? No, this Buffalo team has had its ups and downs in the last week or two. They've been struggling around the 500 mark in the uh, last 10 games, but still they're a team that is tough to play, some balanced scoring, led by some of their veterans, Matt Jakubowski, and you had some other ones there, uh, Adam Tredowitz, and then you got the rookie, Trevor Pekka, 
Vance to be clear with that name is he's the son of Michael, who's committed to Miami, Ohio. All of them are in the 40-point plateau. Yeah. But still, it'd be a uh, team I would we'd be worried about in that first round of playoffs. It might be either North York or Oakville taking them yeah. on. They can't take the Sabres lightly. Yeah, and lost to Mississauga as well last week as well, which was interesting. Yeah. Uh, Orangeville uh, right now sitting third in the division. They've nailed down right now the eighth and final playoff spot in the Southwest. Um, it's going to be tough for the other teams to catch Orangeville, but right now they are in the position to uh, to head into the postseason for the first time in two seasons, aren't they? Yes, indeed. They've had a great run led by their captain, Hudson Lambert. They've been doing well. A couple of big wins. A big win against Burlington recently as well to uh, solidify that playoff spot. And right now, if they can get hot, they have an outside chance of catching St. Mike's for that yeah. seventh seed in the Southwest Conference. That'd be a matchup against Georgetown more than likely. So... Never know what can happen if the Flyers get hot. Yeah, and uh, the team chasing them, uh, Burlington. Now, Burlington, a very interesting story this year, of course. It's, it's actually, they should be proud to have gotten even where they have so far with all the roster, over, roster turnover on that team. Not a single player remaining from last season. They are a young team. Uh, and right now, trying to chase down Orangeville for that eighth and final playoff spot. Seven points back right now. But again, a big thing to take in consideration, three games in hand. So there are many scenarios that could happen here, aren't there? Yeah, absolutely. Burlington's been a big surprise this year with all the turnover, as you said, Alex, with all the players. They've been led by a former North York Ranger, Matt Galley, has been leading the charge as well as uh, Mitchell Morrison has been doing well down there. They've had some big wins this year. They've beaten the Patriots twice. Not many teams can say that. They come back and lose some tough games. They, got, they lost to uh, Orangeville there in a big one. Mississauga, I believe, once as well. So it's going to – we'll have to see what happens. But as you said, the key is going to be those games in hand. They have to take advantage. They have a tough schedule down the stretch, including two matchups against the Raiders. And there are points to be had, though, if they can utilize those three games in hand, though, as you mentioned. Uh, Milton, okay, so let's get beyond the surface here, which is, yeah, three wins on the season so far, not that impressive. But you mentioned earlier on in the show, and it's everyone's been taking notice, over the last few weeks, the Ice Hawks have actually looked like an entirely different team. They haven't been getting blown out. Uh, they've been keeping games close and even picked up their third win of the season against the Stouffville Spirit. Um, so what we hope uh, for, the, for the good of the league, as a matter of fact, because Milton's been kind of soft the last couple of years, they can keep that momentum heading into next season. And, uh, I mean, in your opinion, what's been different about Milton over the last few weeks? Because they've looked so much better. I think finally, Mary Chiquillo and his coaching staff have got a team that has been there because nobody's been moved since the trade deadline. So that's the thing. They have a team. They know who's there for the rest of the season. They're starting to gel together. And it's been pretty well. I mean, Zach Sirota is leading the charge there. He has about 20 points. That doesn't sound like a lot, but that is pretty good on a team where there's been a lot of turnover this year. But yes, as you said, since the turn of the year, they've been playing teams very strongly. The Patriots, they took, it was only one nothing Toronto into the third period. Absolutely. For the Patriots, blew it open. And they had a, a big effort against St. Mike's the night, the night after they lost. Or they George, beat Georgetown only beat them 3-1 as well on that Sunday. So, I mean, it's the, those are all good results for Milton, aren't they? Oh, absolutely. It's yeah. good to build on. Definitely building blocks towards next year. They keep the nucleus on the team. A lot of the players are 99, so they have a lot of kick and baggage. I think it's only like one or two 20-year-olds. So. And another big surprise has been Noah Battaglia in the goal. I mean, he only has two wins on the season, but he was a team candidate East selection, and he's – Got a 4.28 goals against and a 9.00 save percentage. That's pretty good numbers for a team that it only is. had three wins on the season. It is. Uh, we are out of time, my friend, but uh, it's going to be fun to watch that West Division down the stretch and see what transpires. We will have you on again. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, more OJ Today coming up in just a moment. Hey folks, welcome back to the OJ Today. For the majority of the season, the Wellington Dukes were in cruise control. They've really yet to be challenged in the East. And uh, for a while, they looked like they were going to run away with the conference title. But there's been a shift in their fortunes lately. And as their huge point lead has been gobbled up by both Aurora and Newmarket, the Dukes had lost three straight heading into last Sunday when they took on a desperate Whitby Fury squad. And Whitby badly needs points in their chase for eighth spot in the Northeast. Early on, Patty DeMaio apparently had a burr in his saddle as he takes out not one but two Dukes players. Uh, but on the score sheet, all Wellington. Daniel Panetta whips it past Alex Horoski to make it one zip. Just a minute and a half later, uh, he will nab his second of the game right on the doorstep. 2-0 uh, for the Dukes. Four minutes after that, Teddy McGee 
cleans up the garbage and it's three nothing for Wellington. Second frame now, uh, Mackenzie Warren uh, will charge in here and he will uh, just dribble it past Horoski to make it a four spot. They actually added two more to make it six in the third. Uh, Horoski doing his part with the nice glove hand there, but there was just no offense to speak of for Whitby as they go down big six, zip to Wellington. Okay, Burlington trying to catch Orangeville for eighth in the Southwest, taking on the JRCs. They start off like a house of fire. Josiah the Gazon knocking it past Christian Mattiachi to make it one zip and just a minute and a half later, Jackson Camp on the power play. Uh, finds daylight from the point, 2 nothing for the Cougars, but the JRCs would close out the period strong. Uh, odd man rush here, Justin Vernace will get it back to Nolan Regan, and boom, the deficit cut in half to 2-1, to one. and then it's Eric Ciccolini doing all the heavy lifting here. Uh, Matthew Dunsmore makes the stop, but the Shermanator, David Sherman, Knocking home the rebound, it's all tied at two. Second period, top five nominee here as look at the save by Matty Achi on Deaglin Small. Worth a second look. Post to post in a jiffy as uh, Joe Montezano would say. Great stop, but there was no denying Josiah DeGazan on this one. Sweet moves, cuts inside, money. Cougars back on top, 3-2. Just before the buzzer though, Eric Ciccolini sent in on the break. He beats Dunsmore. Once again, they were all tied up. Third frame, Toronto gets the winner. Follow the crazy bouncing puck. It goes up, over, and in past Dunsmore. Ouch, that was the winner. The Cougars giving up two crucial points in their chase for a playoff spot. They go down 4-3 to the Junior Canadians. Okay, another juicy matchup here. Red Hot North York hosting Newmarket. Noah Robinson sprung on the break late in the second. He will beat... Fraser Kirk, and it's one zip. Then in the third, two beauties. Jordan. Off the fourth, make the spin move, pulls the trigger, scores! What a shot, what a move, Noah Jordan. It looks like stepped on the stick of Kirk, so Kirk doesn't have his stick. Krieger, half fourth, fire, scores! Ross Krieger, what a shot! And Jake Howarth calling the shots there, nicely done. Three zip Rangers, uh, Newmarket refuses to die though. Alex Yarulo. Gets the Canes on the board, and then late in the game, Nicholas Soner pulls them to within one. That is as close as they would get, though, as a North York. Looking good. Uh, they're just two points behind the Pats now uh, for the number one seed in the Southwest Conference. A true clash of the Titans was on tap Wednesday night as the West-leading Georgetown Raiders hosted the South-leading Toronto Pats on the Raiders had fallen way behind the Pats in the Southwest before Christmas, uh, but since reeling off wins in 11 of 12 games, they were nipping at their heels once again. And Wednesday was a chance for G-Town to see just how far they'd come. And this is another one that really lived up to the hype. No scoring in the first period. Second frame, Jonathan Hampton. Uh, One-timer past Tyler Fassel. And the Raiders draw first blood. And then... Stir the pot, it's Jordan Crocker dancing his way uh, past Fassel right out front. Right there to stretch the Raiders lead to two. G-Town actually out shooting them 25-16 through two periods. Uh, Troy Tempano answering the bell when required. Adam Patrick, sweet dangles, but Troy, ugh, just makes it look so easy. The Raiders kept coming. Brandon D'Agostino will spin and just fire it home there. And the big matchup was actually looking like a bit of a dud until the third. Cue the Pats comeback. Uh, Lee Lapid charges to the net, gets rewarded, and it's now a 3-1 hockey game. Then Andrew Petrucci. Benwell, Troy's a center. Polizic there to Petrucci. He makes a move. Oh, what a move and what a goal by the sniper. Andrew Petrucci going around to Pano. Power play marker and it's 3-2. Alan Corkum with the call. Petrucci, what a rock star this year. Finally, 58 seconds left on the clock. Net empty. Look at the backdoor pass to Dante Spagnolo. So many weapons on this Patriots team. Wow. Overtime solved nothing. As mentioned, this game ended up really living up to the hype. Uh, a possible preview of the Southwest final. Who knows? Pats come back from three goals down to tie it up. Uh, okay, OJHL Combine. Just a reminder, taking place... 
early April in Oshawa. Uh, players, you can showcase your skills to all OJHL teams. Uh, each player guaranteed three games. OJHLcombine.ca for more information. The standings in the north, Aurora. Uh, stretches it to six over Newmarket now, followed by uh, Markham, which has been sliding a bit. Uh, Pickering, Stouffville, and Lindsay. Uh, in the east, Wellington. Uh, nine points over Kingston. Coburg, as mentioned, uh, pulls slightly ahead of Trenton and Whitby. Uh, looking like they might be down and out now. Uh, in the south, the Patriots, two-point lead over second place North York, uh, followed by Oakville, the JRCs, St. Mike's, and Mississauga trying to catch up to eighth in the southwest. Uh, and in the west, Georgetown, 14-point bulge over Buffalo, followed by uh, Orangeville, uh, Burlington, and the Ice Sox, nine points on the season thus far. Hey folks, welcome back to the OJ today. The Buffalo Junior Sabres have established themselves as one of the top franchises in the OJHL over the past few seasons. Now, true, uh, they haven't won any league titles yet, but they've consistently fielded a strong team and their track record of advancing players to the next level is one of the best. And as the OJ's only American team, there's definitely some national pride there every time they cross the border and go head to head with their Canadian rivals. And we find out more about the Junior Sabres now. And this week's team report brought to you by Cliff Bar, official energy bar and sports nutrition food of the OJHL. While last season was by no means a bad one for the Buffalo Junior Sabres, the problem with finishing as the eighth seed in the Southwest Division was the matchup they were given in the first round of the playoffs. The eventual Buckland Cup champion Georgetown Raiders awaited them, and the Sabres went down in five hard-fought games. Uh, yeah, last year went well. Uh, it was good to get to know the league, and it was good to get to know the playoff experience and whatnot. Obviously, Georgetown is a pretty good team, and we fell short in the first round, but it was good uh, getting the experience overall. This year, the Blue and Gold have upped their game significantly. In fact, the West Division leading Raiders haven't even posed a problem. The Sabres took three of four matchups. They're a young, fast team, and head coach Nick Tuzzolino likes what he sees. You know, I, I've been a real fan of uh, the team so far. Um, you know, at the start of this year, it was important for us to field the right kind of lineup uh, age-wise and not so much concerned about result. Uh, going down the stretch and uh, you know instilling what uh, my, me and my coaching staff have and kind of seeing the result here in a little bit and being able to chase Georgetown and let the guys feel what it's like to push for a number one spot and you know in the hunt is uh, exactly where I could uh, you know where I would want them to be right now especially headed into playoffs uh, but they're a very young group and I feel like they've learned a ton uh, so far till now and uh, literally every time we set foot on the ice is a learning experience. Buffalo has been led by forward Matt Jakubowski, who just may have pulled off the OJHL's goal of the year earlier in the season. A play that had teammates pumped, and the coaches, uh, well. I've seen him do it in the summer, never thought I'd seen a game, but it's one of those things where, uh, you know, a nice goal, don't ever do it again, type of thing. But uh, when he comes back to the bench, if he wouldn't have scored, I'm sure he would have gotten quite a razzing. Jack Rod really does have a tremendous skill set, and he does a lot of that cool stuff in practice too, so I mean, I really wasn't too surprised that he would do something like that in a game. Trevor Pekka recently committed to Miami of Ohio on a scholarship. A father Mike was an NHL star and member of Team Canada, so it's not shocking that hockey talent runs in the family. You know, obviously with him, he comes from a background of family pedigree. Uh, he's got high-end speed, a great shot, and he has a hockey sense that is, uh, you know, right up there with the best. Pekka teams with Adam Trudowitz to form a dynamic offensive duo. Uh, me and Trudowitz have been a, a good group of uh, like pair line mates so far. We just something clicked. I don't know what it was. We just been playing super well together and have great chemistry. Just easy to play with. Brian George has been one of the OJ's top puck stoppers this season, a gem discovered by the Sabres scouting staff while playing in Michigan. You know, he stepped in there in a lot of games and stole us a couple. Uh, you know, he's been really good against top teams. He has a, he has a compete level that I don't think anyone in this league knows about. Uh, uh, Anthony Hora is, uh, in my opinion, uh, the most pro-rated defenseman I've seen. Uh, if you look at his puck handling skills and the way he can read a game, 
He is up there right with some of the best you watch in pro hockey every night. Uh, he's somebody who's got to get uh, you know his feet better, but uh, his hockey his hockey sense and mind make up for that in all aspects. He is uh, definitely our, our leader back there, and he drives the ship most nights. Uh, Christian DeFelice is uh, you know he, he's been our heartbeat all year. Uh, he's the only 97 we have on this roster, uh, the only Canadian we have on this roster, and uh, you know he's done an amazing job with just taking over the reins. Uh, he commutes in every day. Uh, from Thorold and he makes the boys uh, you know laugh they call him grandpa and you know that's just the off ice on ice he leads our team in hits every night he leads our team in points and he plays in every situation as the lone American team in the league the Sabres have plenty of options in regards to where to play they've played nearly 20 consecutive seasons in the OJ now and Tuzolino makes it clear why uh, we do our research uh, in other leagues when it comes to the NAHL and the USPHL and those other leagues and you know the OJHL makes the most sense. It gets the most D1 commits. Uh, the travel makes sense for the kids in school. Uh, you know we're up and back for a game and kids are in their own bed every night. Obviously you know the, the Buffalo Sabres the NHL have been a huge supporter of us uh, from the facility uh, to our logos to everything we have. Uh, you know we're on the ice four days a week. Uh, guys get privileged to go to their games pretty much whenever they want. Uh, they see them practice on a daily basis, uh, you know, they work out where they work out. Uh, yeah, there is a bit of pride involved, uh, being the only American team in the league, going against the Canadians every night, you know, it's kind of a U.S. versus Canada rivalry, although we do have some Canadians on our team, it uh, makes games a little bit more interesting. Okay, before we go, the top five brought to you by Chaos, the official hat provider to the Ontario Junior Hockey League. Uh, number five, North York's Noah Jordan. Uh, with the defender draped all over him like a cheap shirt, doesn't matter. Top shelf, beautiful goal. Uh, number four, another Ranger, Ross Krieger. Watch the moves. One, two, three. Feeds Nick Leshuk. Poetry in motion. Number three, Christian Mattiacci coming up huge against Burlington on Sunday. Take another look. Robs Deaglin Small from point blank range. Number two, even better, Coburg's Elliot Girth. Down and out, right? Think again. Sticks with it and robs Alex Iarulo of Newmarket. Number one, Andrew Petrucci, the OJ scoring leader. Just look at the patience. Gets taken down here, uh, but still manages to beat Georgetown keeper Troy Timpano. That's beautiful. It's our chaos play of the week. And that's all the time we've got for this week. But uh, just remember, folks, to keep up to date with the OJHL, all your news, stats, standings, and stories, you can always head to OJHL.ca. And of course, you've got all your social media options to check out there as well. Thank you for tuning in, folks. We'll see you next week.